So as you, sorry, Bea. As you all know, the EU Parliament elections were held between May the 23rd and the 26th earlier this year. So not only are new MEPs elected to the Parliament, but new leaders are also posted to the main top jobs of the EU, namely a new president of the Commission, a new president of the Parliament, a new president of the Council, and an EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs. Now, unusually this year, the European Central Bank's election uh, happened to coincide with the five-year parliamentary election. So it's just a once in a blue moon event that this has all happened in the same year. So just to quickly recap, the EU is divided up into the European Commission, which is the legislative branch of the EU, the European Parliament, which is composed of roughly 700 MEPs, and these 700 MEPs are directly elected by EU citizens. Then you have the European Council, which is all the heads of state and government of EU member states, which should not be confused with the Council of the European Union. And then you've got the Court of Justice, the Court of Auditors, as well as the European Central Bank. So this speech is going to focus on the newly appointed leaders for the Commission, the Parliament, the Council, the ECB, and the High Representative for EU Foreign Affairs. So all of these people effectively represent the EU on, um, uh, when they go abroad. Now, the way it works is that the president of the EU, the European Commission, is nominated by the Council, and then this has to be approved by the Parliament. And the mandate is a five-year term. But the nomination process has been subject to a lot of criticism in the past. Many people have likened it to a horse trading system and have said that it's essentially a shady backroom deal. So to counterbalance this criticism, people have come up with the so-called Spitzen candidate system. And so this is a kind of lead candidate system. The different political parties of the parliament will have a lead candidate on their list. And this is the Spitzen candidate. So whichever party gets the most votes, then the person on the top of the list will be nominated to be the president of the European Commission. So this year, uh, many people thought that the Commission presidency would go to Manfred Weber. Sorry, I should have written that on the board. He was the lead candidate of the EPP, the European People's Party. Many people, however, are very critical of the Spitzen candidate system, particularly President Emmanuel Macron. Uh, many people say that this is not a merit-based system and it is not the best way to pick a competent candidate. Uh, many people say that this whole system needs to be reformed and that pan-European lists of politicians should be put forward. That way you could really spur this genuine idea of EU-wide party politics. So the whole idea when you um, elect a new commission president is you want to elect someone who is going to represent the EU. So there needs to be a balance between, uh, in terms of politics, so between the right and the left, between northern countries and southern countries, eastern countries and western countries, big countries and smaller countries. And also this year they were really striving for gender balance in, the term, in terms of the top jobs. So this was always going to be very difficult to be able to do, trying to get 27 member states to agree. Um, I said 20 mem 27 member states because although the UK is still technically part of the EU, they very politely agreed to sit out on these talks because they will be leaving at some point in the near future. And eventually the decision came um, after just three days of debate, whereas five years ago when Juncker was elected, uh, it took about three months to decide on a person. So just as a quick refresher, the outgoing leaders of the top jobs are President of the Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, who was the former Prime Minister of Luxembourg, 
the President of the Parliament is Antonio Tajani, an Italian MEP. Uh, the President of the Council was the former Prime Minister of Poland, Donald Tusk. And then there was the High Representative for EU Foreign Affairs was Federica Mogherini, an Italian Foreign Minister. And then the President of the ECB was Mario Draghi, who's an Italian economist. So already you can see lots of Italians. Um, and then in terms of a gender balance, it's all men except for Mogherini. Uh, so this time in these elections, none of the jobs went to anyone that was expected, to any of the front runners. Um, and many people are saying that the people who have been elected are very much so a compromise team and that um, it's, many of these people do have weaknesses. So to summarise, the new president of the commission, uh, for the very first time, we have a woman. Her name is Ursula von der Leyen, or von der Leyen, I can't remember what pronunciation we agreed on. Uh, she's German and from the EPP. She is a little bit embroiled in controversy due to the time when she was Minister of Defence in Germany. Uh, people were not very impressed with her leadership. Many people had call for her to resign, but on the whole, people seem to think that she will be a good commission president. The new president of the parliament is David Maria Sassoli, an Italian from the PES. He was a journalist and is supposedly, well, quite well known in Italy, but not very well known outside of Italy. The president of the council has gone to Charles Michel from Belgium. Uh, he is supposedly the Prime Minister of Belgium at the moment, but in classic Belgian style, Belgium doesn't actually have a government at the moment. Uh, so hopefully he'll have more work to do as the President of the Council. And for the High Commissioner um, for Foreign Affairs, we have a Spaniard, Joseph Bodil from the PES. He's a lot older than Federica Mogherini was, so people are saying he may well travel less. Uh, but maybe this is a good time for the EU to focus on itself. And finally, a surprise candidate for the president of the ECB was Christine Lagarde, who was the former chief of the IMF. Um, and although she isn't an economist, people say that she is very well known on the international stage. Um, so to conclude, I would say that it's such a turbulent time for the EU in terms of Brexit, the rise of Russia and China and how unpredictable Donald Trump is, it's very important to have steady, stable leaders for the EU who will be able to help steer the EU through these stormy times. Thank you.